and we're recording. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Lane Smith, who is the author of the forthcoming 78 Acts of Liberation. I can't show you the book yet because it's not out yet. But Lane, welcome. And and um, tell us about the book. Do you want to start just sort of, first of all, when is when are we going to see it? Oh, yeah. So it's out August 20th. Um, if people want to pre-order it now, it is available anywhere for for pre-order and pre-orders really, really help. I think most people know, but like pre-orders are what decides whether the book even gets put in stores or even gets reviewed and, and all of that kind of stuff. It's like successful books become successful because they already were, you know, yeah. it's like yep. one of those things. It's, it's just like, there has to be early interest for them to even care about promoting it ever (laughs) in any way, including algorithms, like just uh, algorithms. Uh, It won't even make it into algorithms if there's not a certain amount of pre-orders. All of that stuff, you know, that we see on social media is all into everything. So like, yeah, pre-orders really, really, really help for first time authors like me for sure. And authors that aren't the same, you know, cisgender you know well obviously I'm white and most authors are white and everything but like you know there's a lot like radical voices that are pushing the edge of things are not always uh lifted to the top for obvious reasons so you know people can help with uh with that by pre-ordering for sure. That's good to know. I think a lot of folks see like pre pre-authors are good for uh, pre-orders are good for authors, but they don't necessarily know why. That's a good that's a good description. That's that's why it sets off a whole chain of things about how the distributor behaves, how the algorithms on the bookstores, you know, online bookstores behave, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So whether it's going to get reviewed by Publishers Weekly or whatever, all that all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Very good to know. Very good to know. Yeah. So pre-order this book. I I'm honored to have had a preview of it, and I can tell you that it's 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 going to be worth it. the The chapter on the history alone, I think, is you know brilliant. And if I ever do another like foundational beginner class, I'm going to require that history chapter. Oh, um, thank you so but, much. I am particularly proud of that chapter, and I do feel like it's worth the price of the book yeah. just for that. Even if you really don't care about reading cards or whatever, that history chapter I put a lot of in-depth and recent research into that stuff that you really haven't probably seen before so yeah no i was surprised to be surprised by how much i was surprised by if that makes sense (laughs) so i love yeah 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 that one source that i had that was like um romani in the roma in the ancient islamic world is a very very recent academic text that I shelled out the money for because I just felt like it would be so worth it (laughs) you know I mean that was just so eye-opening to me it made me wish that I could have read more texts um in Arabic I feel like there's probably a whole trove of information that we just don't won't ever see in the west yeah um, from you know another perspective of (laughs) where all these things originated (laughs) And uh, that's on purpose, of course. But yeah, if I knew, I don't know any other languages, which feels like so frustrating right now. Yeah. That it's I'm 45, so it's kind of late. it's not too late to learn another language, but it does get more difficult as you get older, is what I've heard. But um, yeah. yeah, I really wished that I had How been you... able to research another languages too. Yeah. How did you even find that source? Because that's so specific and so new. I mean, new to us anyway. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I love to research. So, you know, I I feel, you know, God, Google has gotten so bad. But when I was doing it, you know, when I was starting to research in 2021, it wasn't quite as bad as it is now, where it's just like corporate sponsored link, corporate sponsored link, corporate sponsored link, blah, blah, like just trash now. But yeah, um, yeah, I got to find another browser, I guess. But um, yeah, (laughs) I mean, just more stuff would come up. I was just looking for like, uh Roma perspectives and things of that nature you know and there were a few things that I knew about like mom look decks and th- just things would come up the more you go on different like rabbit holes you know just yeah. things would come up and the book came up and I was like oh yeah I gotta read that for sure yeah fascinating so for folks who don't know yet will you give us like a high level of of, of 78 acts oh sure yeah so I mean really it was kind of, the book is kind of born of my frustration with seeing so much um, navel gazing reflection that doesn't ever go anywhere, <laughs> you know, especially on social media. It's hard, you know, you don't know what people are doing with it privately, but like 
the language of psychology has become so dominant in in tarot reading and like um, even really pushing aside and marginalizing any like practical uses, fortune telling, that kind of thing of like, what's going to happen so I can choose what to do. It's all this like inner reflection, spiritual journey, like, you know, stuff, which is fine and good. I just like, I feel like you can go too far or just have too much in one direction. And like, what about let's go back and pick up this other thread of, of, you know, so of political and social context. And if we can read tarot with psychological language, which of course it never was in the 14th century because modern psychology had not been invented yet. Um, we could also read it in, in political terms, modern political terms, activist terms, and really um, kind of draw inspiration, not just from esoteric symbols and abstract concepts, but real historical movements that have happened. Um, and I just felt like it could be a way to um, remember those things and know that we can still draw lessons from those events and from mass struggles and from even just, uh, you know, activist skills that I've learned being an organizer over the years, that kind of thing. It was sort of like, I'm not trying to dictate that other people use these exact correspondences. It was just like, here's an example from my own experience of how you might um, read tarot through a political lens. Yeah. And then, so, you know, I think of tarot as like an imaginal sphere that we enter when we're reading, but also tarot is its own um, sphere of in influence, not just in terms of what we're coming up with when we read, but who gets published, who gets invited to conferences, all, reviews, decks, all these things. And like, let's look at the whole context of what tarot is, including the business and who is reading and who is considered a legitimate teacher or reader of tarot and who isn't and what are the social reasons for that and just like putting everything in context because I feel like there are a lot of spiritual people now who want to be more politically active and feel people have told me they feel intimidated by ac activists like leftist types who are very anti-spirituality and I have experienced that too and um you know like yeah just it's, it's sort of just an entry point to be like, you can make this your own and yeah. this history belongs to all of us. And um, just telling the truth about history is like one starting point. Yeah. Speaking up when a deck is bad or publishers are doing shitty things are like really small things in your own little sphere of influence that you can do. And it yeah. makes a difference. Yeah. So it's, it's very action oriented. And um, that is, that is sort of like my main online persona i yeah. guess is to be about action but that's not to say that i'm not reflective or that i'm not spiritual or that um or that those things aren't important or don't matter it's it's more of just a pushing that way to counterbalance where there's already lots of weight if that yeah. makes sense it makes total sense and you know you're talking about something that's so key you know so much of spirituality just use the term spirituality loosely right in in modern yeah. life <laughs> draws on like really old concepts but so, so a common theme in so many of them is the interconnectedness of of our lives of being of being on this planet of being with whatever is beyond our human comprehension and yet for some reason for so many people in spiritual spaces like activism and progressive thought and politics are separate but they they can't and never have been and I think we're in a moment right now, which I'm very thankful for, where your book, Maria Minnis's book, Charlie Claire Burgess's book, you know, I don't know Charlie, but I love their work. And I, I just feel like the conversation is now starting to happen. And, and you know, the three of you in particular are folks who um, have managed to, you know, I'll be a little impolitic in the moment and say kind of break through the, the kind of gate kept landscape of trad publishing right now you know what I mean there's a lot of sort of resistance to doing this but we're sort of in a moment and I feel like oh good let's take advantage of this um do you yeah for sure when I was shopping my book around in 2021 tarot publishers were not interested that was and, my you know question. it took me well, yeah it was took me well over a year to find a publisher who would even touch it mm. and it's um, I'm, I'm 
Yeah, I'm hoping that it means now that like the marketplace is ready, which is like a thing that drives me nuts. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there are just in addition to your book, there's also um, Sherry Shone's Hoodoo for Everyone, uh, the Missing Witches podcast, New Moon Magic. Like there are these new books that are coming out that are like, oh, yeah, spiritualism is engaged. Spiritualism is connected. And sure, if you want to do this, great. But you have to know the history. And I feel like so so valuable do you have a favorite i this is like asking you know what's your favorite child but do you have a favorite example from the book that you were able to kind of draw like a really effective or even surprising line between the tarot card or the tarot concept and activism and engagement with modern life yeah uh, before i answer that i just wanted to say, you know i do think the history of tarot is important and also the history of this movement in tarot you you named a lot of like people who are sort of right now um, and I just want to say this didn't come out of nowhere. It certainly didn't start with me and Maria and Charlie. Like people, there are people who have been doing it. I feel like Rashando Tramble's Stay yep. Woke Tarot was like part of that. Um, Karina Rosella's Rise Up Good Witch podcast, mm -hmm. even um, Sarah Faith Godestiner's Many Moons workbooks um, that were all like collaborative, bringing in a, like a diverse array of tarot readers making it like explicitly political and these for years and years cassandra snow's querying mm -hmm. the tarot like these have all been part you know and decks too like um next world tarot by christy c road and so i i also mentioned the, the history of those um people in the book too because i just feel like it's it's so important to name your lineage and not act like i, I invented this and i right. it started with me or but clearly that is not true. Um, and I, I have a particular lens on it, which is a really zoomed out lens, I think. And some people bring more of like a healer approach to it. Like I think Maria does and um, more of like a, an intimate connection to it. And I tend to be more like history, you know, zo zoomed way out, but there's room, there's room for all, everybody's different. It's not like, I don't think anybody should be like, I'm the social justice tarot person. Right. Like I certainly don't feel that way about myself. And I don't think anybody should feel that way. Yeah, um, so I just wanted to highlight that, that it's like, I don't feel ownership over no, it. No, yeah, anybody. no, yeah, no, thank you for pointing that out. And like, I don't think it's just people who are doing it now. Like it's been building, it's been building. But as far as like my favorite card it's it's tough to say i like it when things are difficult and like really <laughs> take digging and working and stuff so i would first one is like my first reaction was like oh the empress the black panther free breakfast program as the empress it was the first one i thought of yeah. i love it um as i just like i really wanted to, to like push hard against the sort of like white fertile woman in a garden sort of thing and make it you know Black men in an urban environment also <laughs> can bring this nurturing care and have done. We have actual living examples of one that has happened. I love that one. And that one was very, very easy. Um, I think probably one of the more difficult ones for me was the devil. It's mm. a difficult card to begin with. Um, when I was trying out some of these ideas online, I had the devil as sort of like the sexual revolution more broadly and about sort of the double edge of um, sexual freedom, just like in the context of gender inequality and yeah. <laughs> like the, the double edge of like how that, um, well, ended up in a lot of people being sexually assaulted, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and so that was just like a little too broad when I was going through, you know, because most of the cards are like specific movements. Mm -hmm. So I made it, um, I made the devil card, the Me Too mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. um, and all the thorny things that have come. I mean, that was like a Pandora's box of issues, cancel culture and everything that came out of that. So there's like a whole lot there that I still needed to pack into the same amount of space as any yeah. other card, but it's such, such an entangled, um, difficult, complex uh, set of issues there. So I also love what I did there too, because it yeah. was complicated. <laughs> no i love that the devil is one of my favorite cards and i think because of yeah what yeah described. and and i love yeah. I, this, this makes me want to ask so your journey as a as a reader as a tarot person as a learner did you you know were you always sort of viewing the cards through this lens and and it was it was more about kind of figuring out how to set it down on paper or was this you know, you, you, did you start with kind of like the esoteric stuff as a student and kind of have to grow into that? And, and how did you kind of do that journey? 
Yeah, I never really had exposure to esoteric teaching or like witchy stuff at all. So when I started it, I was I was 19 in college in the 90s. So there wasn't even really it was like really like pre-internet. And I just like had a friend who was like um, another Sagittarius besides me who was like, we need to get in the car, drive an hour to where there's a shop where because yeah. I need to get a tarot deck, but I can't buy it for myself. I need you to buy it for me. And if you do that, <laughs> like, for you. And I was like, okay, of course, let's go, you know, yes. say less, let's, let's go for it. And, um, you know, I was like, whatever, I don't care. I had no particular thoughts about it. I was just like, you said you want to drive somewhere. Let's go. So, um, you know, they, she gave me a deck that was, she knew that I had been really, really into Russian literature in high school. So she gave me the Tarot of St. Petersburg. Um, the Russian tarot of St. Petersburg, which literally has fucking like Stalin as the devil in this. <laughs> oh, so, and it's so dark. It's so dark. And wow. I, um, so I learned <laughs> from the little white book with the Russian tarot <laughs> of St. Petersburg, just reading for myself, being like a super um, chronically suicidally depressed, like teenager mm. and, and young adult. Uh, the readings were dark and bad <laughs> mm-hmm. you know I just yeah I always used tarot through a very very personal lens and I didn't know anything about any of the spiritual context for it really it was just me and the cards yeah. talking <laughs> yeah. um so yeah really I guess it was sort of like that therapeutic lens that I had first which it wasn't really <laughs> very therapeutic for me for a really long time and I had to set it aside because it was just it was just compounding my own shit yeah. to sit there and read it, you know, just, yeah. So I, you know, I set it down for a couple of years and then like in my early twenties, I picked it up again with a different deck, <laughs> um, a little bit lighter. Yeah. Deck. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I still, you know, for the longest time, it was always reading about relationships, romantic relationships, like constantly, constantly reading about romantic crushes, relationships whatever yeah. all the time like my my tarot and private life really was very siloed from my political organizing and activism very very like hard compartmentalization mm. and i guess just um not really even until i like late 30s early 40s i was like i don't want to have this compartmentalization anymore i think really um seeing channing nicholas the astrologer talking about capitalism in mm. her um astrology really like made me gave me permission to be like those don't have to be kept separate right and that was such an awakening for me to be like i don't have to keep it a secret oh also just just personally like people that i organized with um you know i mostly organized with like white marxist men but there were a few like during occupy wall street um i was organizing with a bunch of people of color who were critical of Occup- of the like white male led occupy wall street groups and were having their own separate meetings so i would hang out with them and they would talk about like astrology and dreams and all this stuff that was completely taboo in the like white marxist circles and it was just like oh you know political people can be into this stuff and I don't have to keep it a secret. That also gave me permission of just like um, being around people who are not just like cis white straight men. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so it it took a very long time to bring them together for sure. And I think when it really came together was in 2019, I joined um, the Tarot Association for the British Isles. I I joined as like an online forum. I wasn't on social media and um, I quit Facebook in like 2016 because I was part of like organizing. I quit or helping like being part of organizing the women's march because mm. of all the like racism and transphobia mm-hmm. that went down and i kept speaking out about that shit and i basically lost all my friends and i left <laughs> i left facebook because i would not shut up about the transphobia and racism in that women's march um so i i quit facebook in 2016 and then i wasn't on any social media again until 2021 mm. but i was on this forum this private forum internet forum the tarot association of the british isles in 2019 doing like free readings free email readings for people Mm. all over the world um mentored by somebody in the group and so i was i joined and i was i like managed their blog and stuff like that um 
And so, you know, in 2020, I was still part of that group and Black Lives Matter was, you know, really blown up. And I was like, we got to make a statement as a, even though it's a British organization, I was like, it doesn't matter. Like we have to put out a statement. So I helped write a statement for that. And that kind of just like opened the door to like, you know, people are like, well, what decks, you know, do you know of that are by black creators and things like that? So I was shared a list of decks that I knew. Of, and it was just sort of like, okay, yeah, this is, this needs to go together. It can't stay separate. It can't stay separate at right. this point. And um, yeah, so then um, I didn't even know anybody was talking about uh, the, the Tarot Association of the British Isles was a lot of like people even older than me, like six, 60s and 70 year olds, um, mostly white people. So I didn't know what kind of conversations were happening on social media at all until I finally jumped in in 2021 and found poof, like all these amazing people having incredible conversations um, that I just had not been aware of until until then. Yeah, I love this. I love the journey. I love hearing people's journeys. And I actually want to go back a little bit to the the sort of. Mm you know, cis het men Marxist thing and the spirituality thing and the idea, you know, that sort of, you know, religion is the opioid of the, you know, masses sort of yes. concept. But, um, you know, it occurs to me now after years of being very anti-spiritual myself because of my own kind of traumatic relationship to the religion of my youth, that there is kind of a colonial mindset in modern leftists who think that spirituality is uh, separate from us as humans and somehow... Um, a distraction from activism or a distraction from right. progress. Uh, and I'm, you know, I, I realize that I'm not really forming a question here, but I wonder, you know, if you had thoughts on sort of, you know, what, what, I don't know, maybe for folks who are like, well, I kind of feel this pull towards incorporating politics into my spirituality or vice versa, you know, where might, or where do you think someone might begin or, or start thinking about doing that work themselves? Other than of course, pre-ordering your book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, when they sit down to start thinking about that, I think they're like, well, let's separate religion and spirituality. And I think you want to slow your roll on that like a little bit, just because like, let's continue to look historically and not just like our own separate abstract concepts about this stuff. I mean, black churches were instrumental in civil rights movement. Um, I talk in my book a lot about like the liberation theologies in Latin America, like look at like the church isn't one thing and the like religious institutions aren't only one way and only playing one role and like, yes, I would like to remove hierarchy from just about everything, but there are like different levels to this right like the hierarchy of a plantation is not the same as the hierarchy within like a black church right. or you know i mean i just it's just to just throw every possible institution out and just be like well if it has anything to do with um organized religion then it's trash well i mean i don't know like it doesn't have to be right. and uh, it hasn't always been and like any like there's this I think there's this need for purity that comes from you know white supremacy that it's like it has to be all good or it's complete trash right like we we can't like we're like we either cancel stuff or if our faith if something is our fave and it has problematic things then we have we decide that those problematic things are acceptable right and um, we you know we decide that we give it back right and we just shove it under the rug whatever it's like we want (laughs) you know we want to preserve this so we're gonna say well everyone was racist at that time or whatever it's fine and you know or you know or completely canceled and that's that's the only way to engage is to have this purity around it and i think people are like that around lots of things yeah where it's like organized religion it's either all good or all bad spirituality anything ever and like leftists are not exempt from having that point of view at all yeah um so yeah it's an sorry that's yeah no go ahead go ahead no you're making me think of something that's been on my mind a lot lately which is that first of all nothing is one thing as you just said and everything is its own opposite in a way and so much of i i think you know again i'm not a scholar in this area but having grown up 
Catholic grown up, you know, in the Abrahamic tradition, I feel like binary is a particularly like Christo colonial concept. Um, and, and that extends into even sort of, I hate this term, but like new age spiritualities where we have like the divine masculine and the divine feminine. But I feel like the more, the more we look at the world closely and thoughtfully, the more we realize that like most binaries are imagined, you know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, in order to, in order to have science, you need spirituality, right? Or you need to have science to have spiritual, like everything is sort of connected in that, in that way. And I think, um one reason why uh these conversations are so helpful in the world is because i think um chipping away at the either or is really valuable and another thing i feel like divination does well um and i i wonder as a you know as a reader um i'm sort of now switching topics a little bit but um, you know, what are your, like, knowing all of that, like, what are your favorite things to read about today? You know, um, like, do you have topics you love that you just, you get excited about to read or? Sure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I want to know everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's not even time n enough left in my lifetime. I know I'm not going to read everything I've ever wanted to read, even yeah. Like if they stopped making books today, oh, yeah. I could never get to read everything. So I, I, like, you know, I, yeah, yeah, I just meant uh, like, yeah. yeah, like things to read. What parts. did you say? Oh, yes, yes. I've still like, God, I'm an embarrassingly romantic person. Mm -hmm. I read about that kind of stuff at all. People, yeah, people wouldn't probably think that about me, but I. That's what we I still read about relationships a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I also read, uh, yeah, I mean, I do read about political realities um, if I think I can take the answer. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I have not tried to predict whether. Palestine will be free in my lifetime. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, there there are things that it's like, if I got an answer that I could comprehend, would it be good for me to know, right, or not? And if if it's not like, it would be helpful. Like, you know, if I'm reading for about a crush, and I'm like, I can take it. I, I can yeah. hear if this is going nowhere. That is as good information for me to know as if it, if there's potential, right? I like I, both of those things are equally like useful, good for me to know information, mm -hmm. but um, that is not necessarily the same for some other thing. Like, right. am I like sometimes am I tempted to ask whether my children will live to see adulthood because I, like the oceans are fucking boiling as right. we speak? Yeah, um, it's not going to be like there's not. The, the possible answers to that don't have equal value, right? Yeah. Like I can't, if I, if the answer is fucking no, like what am I to do with that, right? I, I, and um, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same as the crush question. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, it, I have to like, I think I've gotten better at asking good questions and asking questions that I can receive the answer to and knowing when it's a question that I can't receive yeah. the answer to. Yeah, it's so helpful to know, you know, what's just because you can, should you, you know, that's one thing I, I always say, yeah. you know, read about whatever you want, but just because you can read about something, should you, but the other thing right. too is, is like, how, how predictable are certain things, you know, um, yeah. how, how, you know, how, how even, even elections, you know what I mean? I feel like are less predictable right. than they used to be. Um, so it's, it's not, it's the more. I don't know what the word I'm reaching for here is, but the more the world goes the way it's going, the harder it is to actually get clear predictions because there are so many variables and so so many possibilities exist. Are there things that you just flat out won't read about? Like you have boundaries and you're like, nope, I'm not going to do that topic. I mean, I can't say that I have ever tried to predict somebody's demise or anything mm. like that. I, I've never been asked to. Yeah. I think, you know, I don't have like a, I don't feel like I have a, I would never do, I don't feel like I would never do that too about anything really. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it just comes out in context, like it, 
it, it, it's so contextual. It's so contextual, um, like we were talking about. And also just to say, like you're saying, there's so many complicating factors that it's hard to predict. That doesn't mean that I don't read predictively. I do read pred predictively, but I think I feel less attached to being right. Mm -hmm. um, I feel I feel less attached to like, like I read predictively, but I feel like the answer I get is the answer I need to take mm -hmm. the next few steps. And it's mm -hmm. not about being right long term. It's like, what did I need to hear right now? Yeah. You know what I mean? I it's, a slight, it's a slight dis distinction. And it's sort of, it's just less important that I was exactly right than that, like the way that I interpreted it in that moment led me to behave however I behaved. And perhaps that changed the future. And that doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't mean that I was wrong Yeah. if it changes. Um, because change happens good, <laughs> but, yeah. um, yeah, it's more about like, what's the next step that you're going to take. And, you know, that doesn't mean that I don't read predictively far in the future, but I'm more just mindful that the answer that I get may be just what I needed to hear to do what I'm doing now. If that yeah. makes sense. It makes total sense. And I think, you know, hopefully for anyone who's, who's learning now and, and, and watching this understands like, that's the goal. I think as new folks, we worry about being right. Um, and it's not yeah. necessarily about that. It's, it's what you're describing. It's more about, I don't want to, I, I hate this sort of, because it sounds so limited. It's about being helpful, which sounds sort of like mushy and whatever but it's like what what do they need in this moment um and if you know if it's a personal issue and there's something avoidable then a predictive reading can be very helpful in that regard um but also to your point too think there there are things that are changeable there are times where we have more agency than others in situations and um so there's a lot going on um in in even just sort of how divination works um speaking of a lot going on um, what do you have going on right now? Any projects that you want to share or anything that you have oh, coming up? Well, at the, you know, it's pride time. Yeah. And so right now I'm doing a tarot challenge, um, on my Instagram page. My handle is at left lane Smith. And it's, uh, it's not your typical car today challenge. I made it so that it would actually be challenging, including yeah. for me. <laughs> And I've had people tell me like, oh, this is actually really challenging. <laughs> and I was like, it was intended to be. Um, <laughs> what's challenging about it is that it's, it's, um, it's, it's two card pulls and an accountability post per mm. week. So there's a reflection pull, an action pull, and then you have to do the thing. And, you know, if you didn't do it, own up to it. You know, it's like the third one is not a couple. The third thing is like, did you do it or did you not do it? Because I feel like, I don't know. I just, I've read, I've seen so many people's readings online in tarot challenges and just every day, like, this is what I understood from the cards. And I'm like, okay. But if I'm like following a particular person, I'm like, I don't know if you're listening <laughs> to your readings. Like, I don't know if you're acting on your readings. Like you're reflecting on these same recurring issues I noticed that I tend to notice big picture stuff and I pen patterns and things. And I'm like, I don't know that everyone has a lot of practice doing what tarot guides them to do. It's yeah. like this recursive, like uh, my action is to reflect on this. My action is to reflect on that. And like, there are other actions to take besides reflecting right. like that should lead to different behavior ideally yeah. or some you know doing something um like I feel like I'm always harping on that but that's you know like one of the epigraphs in the front of my book is George Jackson being like we have to prove our predictions about the future with action uh, right I really take that seriously and so I was like for this challenge you're gonna fucking show that you can read the cards and do what they say <laughs> so that's what I've been doing and yes it is hard it is hard to um have the car like I think a lot of people are very accustomed to reading interpretations that are very abstract in general and not um concrete things to do yeah. but I do think the cards can tell you concrete things to do yeah. and so I'm like let me demonstrate at least if no one else does this challenge I will be like look you know um, <laughs> I I think it can work that way and I will do it so 
Um, it's been going good so far for me. I know um, Charlie, Claire Burgess just sent out in their most recent newsletter that they were going to join in this coming week. I know Cassandra Snow has been doing it too. And um, so it's really fun. It's fun to like have other people involved. The more the merrier. Like yeah. I certainly don't care if people join in late, if you do just the last week or whatever, it's, it's challenging just to do one week of a reflection action. And did you do it? Like, it's, I think it's a good exercise and it's all like the theme of it is no pride in genocide. So it's, it's real, the reflection questions are really like, you know, getting into like how we're affected by queer washing, uh, pink washing mm -hmm. and, you know, just like getting into some of these um, issues about how queerness has been conflated with, you know, affluent white culture and mm -hmm. anyone else is like, doesn't have as much of a say in what, queerness is and right. their anomalies and their issues are you know not queer issues they're their other identities or whatever and so like let's 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 get into that and, and take that apart a bit so yeah. that's that's what the challenge is about um yeah i recently had i mean i'm still accepting donations if people want to donate i did like a little ebook called tarot together which is just a bunch mm. of like little fun games to do um in groups of three or more like tarot mm. things to do in groups instead of just like reader client yeah. um and and i did that as a fundraiser for a family um these twin brothers who are trying to evacuate gaza mm. Um, I still, it's still like a pay what you want, literally a dollar. I've had people pay a hundred dollars. I've had people pay $2, whatever, like yeah. literally whatever, um, you donate it. I'll send you the ebook. And then I donate it all to the, to the family in Gaza. Um, that's what I have going on right now. I have, you know, machinations in my mind for future writings and things, but, uh, I don't know that I'm ready to share much detail about that, but, um, yeah, yeah you can't share things uh, before they're ready. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the book, you know, the book is out in two months, so I'm supposed to be in like the marketing phase right now, which is super uncomfortable <laughs> for me. I'm a, you know, I don't, you're into astrology, right? Like I'm a big 12th house or like all my personal planets almost are in the 12th house. I'm a very like, do not perceive me. Let me be behind the scenes. So to like, be like, buy my book is so, so uncomfortable. <laughs> mm. Um but that's sort of necessary. Like I do, I do want people to have it. I do yeah. want people to read it. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, my growing edge is like, you know, I'm a very highly mutable, highly fire, like uh, natal chart. And so my comfort zone is to like introduce a little chaos and flee the scene. Yeah. And like, <laughs> well, I'm similar actually. You know, like, let me just say the the thing that shakes everybody up and then dip, right? But like, <laughs> uh, so having to actually complete a book and follow through, not just to finish writing it, but really follow through the whole cycle of publishing and getting it out there and like receiving back feedback, like following it all the way through is yeah. definitely my growing edge. <laughs> um, so that's good new stuff for me <laughs> <laughs> good yeah i mean i want to just uh before we wrap up touch on the activation part of what you were saying because i think um you're 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 so right about reading like if we're going to do readings and it and it and it, you know again if it just becomes navel gazing there's nothing wrong with that per se but like what's what yeah. do you get from it you know but activating right. things um matters you know in a mirror a reflection is a passive thing the reason that reflection matters is that we look in the mirror and we say oh i don't like my beard this way and we we take right. action on that right or i don't like my hair or i don't like the shirt um so yeah. a reflection is meant to show us something so that we can see whether we're going somewhere or we need to change something and so i love that you talk about activation um and, uh, you know, I'm obviously a big fan of your work. I, you know, I learn a lot from you every day when I, when I read your posts and, um, I'm really thankful for folks who, you know, um, you, yeah, I mean, you don't, you sort of own that landscape of talking about this work this way, but, um, what you are doing is, 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 is vulnerable because you, you set yourself up as a lightning rod, you know, to, it, when you put your work out there in this way right so it right. is brave and it's it's it does require parts of you that maybe aren't your your inclination and so um 
it's 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 I'm grateful for it. And I'm also grateful for it, too, because when people say, well, I don't know what to do, you know, I'm like, well, OK, well, here are like five books. Here's Cassandra Snow's book. Here's Lane Smith's book. Here's, Charles, you know. So, yeah, the, the things are out there. So, you know, um, it is, it's a vulnerable thing. You're a human being and 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 being able to and willing to talk about difficult issues in a public way uh, isn't easy, especially if you are some introverted or you're sensitive in any way, because it's hard not to take the critique personally. You know, when someone comes along and calls you an anti-Semite and you say, well, no, but, you know, maybe let's talk about that. They don't want to hear that. So it's, it's, right, right. It, it's still impact, you know, the, what is it? The, the body remembers, right? It's the impact still hits. Yeah, yeah. I think people probably see me as a less sensitive person in general. And I think in some ways I am. Um, I mean, I think I, I'm i not your typical, like, I'm an empath kind of person. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean that I don't have sensitivities, but um, I, I do have um, good boundaries from a lifetime of needing to have had them. Mm. <laughs> and... Um, you know, and it's talking about Palestine in particular, since you brought up anti-Semitism, that's something I've had practice at for more than 20 years, because mm -hmm. I first learned what a lot of people learned the past several months, 20 years ago. And, right. you know, I've had had practice at it in a much less tense right. <laughs> um, set setting. You know, I was able to practice when it wasn't such high stakes. Yeah. Um, so just to say, it's not like something special about me that I'm able to just ignore the criticism or whatever it's partly you know knowledge and practice that i've had for a very 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 long time and i don't have that when it comes to um sudan and dr congo i mean i'm like i don't hesitate to say free sudan and free right. dr congo and there isn't the same like people aren't going to jump at you and call you names um when you say free sudan and free dr congo um, it's a different issue there where the anti-blackness just makes it like people are like, oh, just tack it on. Don't you right. know, don't pay attention. Um, but people aren't going to like attack you back in the yeah. same way as if you say free Palestine. And uh, yeah, so I just want to I just want to say that that it's like it's experience, knowledge. And I, I appreciate you saying that you've learned from me. I learned from you, too. And I have admired you for so long. I think you're such a fantastic, fantastic teacher. And it has been so gratifying to see you learn and change because, you know, I, like there are people that I have admired that I have felt really disappointed by in the past several months because they're not open to um, learning and changing. And I have I have seen, you know, the progression of like of, of like, you know, I've seen you willing to take in new information and change. And that just makes me have even so much more respect for you. I just like, um, it's really gratifying to to know that I, I really admired you as a teacher before, but now knowing that you are also someone who can learn <laughs> and, and change based on new information is so, it's just like my respect for you is just like through the oh, roof. <laughs> thank you for that. That <laughs> really. means a lot to me. I mean, astrologically, I'm very fixed. And so it's hard for me to do those things, but I, also I know I was yeah. like for a Leo to do this. I was <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> Really, props to you. <laughs> <laughs> Aquarius is my rising sign, um, so I'm very. Wow, man, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. And I feel more yeah, and the older it. I get. I feel more, um, and and birth card wise, I'm a chariot tower. So like you, I, I am too. I am too. Yes, and I also feel more my rising sign as I get older too. Yeah, I mean, good. I think the I allowed the Sagittarius to come out more and be less hidden than yeah. it used to be. Like. But man, that Capricorn is for sure uh, there. <laughs> Capricorn rising, like, yeah, I mean business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I read recently. I'm <laughs> not putting up with bullshit. No, I mean that that partly is age and and just like the world. But mm -hmm. um, I I oh I yeah said that I also read recently um in a book that our sun sign is not who we are; it's who we're trying to become which i think is a really interesting mm -hmm. way of thinking about it because i don't feel like a leo because like yeah. you i don't i do like to be behind the scenes like i like a little validation and a little credit but i don't want to be spotlit so 
Uh, Lane, you know, this I is think so Leo is often like so mischaracterized. Oh, like yeah. Leo's generosity is like one of their main features. I and guess. the insecurity but, too. Yeah. We don't really talk about that either, but the insecurity is big. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, True. Lane, I love talking with you about this. I want to be respectful of your time and your day. I know you have. Oh, yeah. yeah. But this is awesome. Please, folks, uh, pre-order the book again. Um, you know, even if you're going to give it away as a gift, you know what I mean? Like, to Lane's point, we have to work the algorithms in favor of these conversations. And and while yeah. I'm a lover of the written word and a lover of publishing, the publishing industry has gotten more and more and more tied up to the social media and the algorithm and the numbers. Um and to a degree, I get the business part of it, but it should be easier. It's true. Yeah. I mean, of other people who have been published by the same publisher, my following on social media is so tiny. Like other people have like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. And it's like, feels like a miracle that I got published at all. I got rejected by a ton of publishers just on the basis of my small yeah. social media following. Like before I ever, like seriously, it took a year to find anyone like and many of those rejections were like you're not you're not internet famous goodbye yeah. <laughs> right it's just like it's such a different landscape than you know we we're about the same age we grew up in yeah um, it really is it's, it's so sad different. but i i do you know the last thing um i think there are a lot of indie publishers coming up now that are a little more interested in this kind of work and hopefully Hopefully we'll see more of that. Yeah. And I, think, I think if I think it's the, if the publisher you're with is the one I'm thinking of, they have a lot of books that I've loved. And so I'm hoping that this is, you know, again. I think the, my publisher is Sounds True. Um, another publisher I love that I know you love too is North Atlantic yeah. Books. Um, and they're a bit smaller. They um, they actually did make me an offer, but they're, they advanced that they could pay me like they have a cap on what they could pay for any author at all because they're mm. just so small and yeah. i love them because they are right out front with their politics i would have loved to go in north atlantic but their their advance was so small that i it would have cost me money to public i i have to i had to pay for my children's child care yeah. and um daycare is ten thousand dollars a year and for me to even like have my child in daycare part-time so i could write the book it just like what they could have given me in advance, it wasn't possible for yeah. me. So I had to say no, unfortunately, yeah. but they do have fantastic books coming out. Red Tarot, they're yeah. the ones who who pushed on post-colonial astrology. I yeah. love them. They have great, great stuff. Not to like hype up another publisher. That's not my publisher. <laughs> no, no, that's true. It's great too. I, lo I love them. And yeah. like, if I could have published with a non-spiritual um, publisher like AK Press or PM Press, I would have loved to do that. And they're starting to come out with like tarot decks now too. So we are, you know, getting that blending yeah. Of, yeah. Of, of tarot and politics that we want. We're, we're pushing it. And like the more that people support that, um, I think we'll see even bigger and better things um and more more voices that aren't just like yes um i'm trans but i'm also white and and masculine adjacent you know male right. adjacent and we want to see more like black trans women right authors we want to see like voices that truly we're really not hearing right now so yeah. we've got to keep for that this is the thing folks who are watching like it's not about less voices it's about more voices you know what i mean yeah like so right, much right. Like the fear of having to give up yeah there's some things you have to give up but mostly what you have to give up is ignorance you know what i mean like it's really not yeah. as scary as it sounds thank you so much i i'm such a fan i'm so happy to chat with you and you're also just a dope oh fan. i'm such a fan of you thank hey. you <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna stop recording so we can say goodbye for real okay hold on one sec